What's going on there, folks? Good evening. It's the Earth Master here on this Tuesday night, December 13th, 2022. It's about 6.51 p.m. 5.51. What do we got? 5.51? 6.51. There we go. Looking at two different times over here. Uh, on this Tuesday night, uh, latest earthquake out there on the Earthquake 3D Globe shows a 1.5 earthquake into the area of Southern California. Take a look at the last 24 hours of earthquake activity here on the globe. Combined agencies there from the USGS, EMSC, and also the GeoNet servers. Quite a bit of uptick uh, around the Caribbean plate, looks like. Some movement into Haiti as well. Uh, picking up pretty drastically down into the South America region, where we just had a, looks like a 4.1 coming into there. Uh, just as we speak. All right, let's go ahead and pop over here to the USGS uh, map here looking at that earthquake down south uh, into the Chile area got a 4.3 coming in uh, within this past hour 33 kilometers deep but also looked like there was some other movement showing up here on the EMSC model so things may be getting interesting here uh, for the South America region uh, Caribbean plate I know we've seen some activity up here around Haiti not showing up here on the USGS model Looks like they had a 4.0. Pretty recent earthquake shown up there. Uh, looks like within the vicinity there of Haiti. And also some activity. Some threes stretching up into portions of the Middle America Trench throughout this area. Uh, but the USGS kind of limited there on their uh, earthquake data systems. Only showing, well, uh, movement... Uh, two, uh, all, all magnitudes here for the uh, U.S. territories, Puerto Rico region. But uh, nothing over here across the Middle America Trench because of the 4.0 threshold. All right, uh, eastern portion of the country, Midwest, aside, aside from some severe weather, they had quite a bit of severe weather kicking up there today. Seen some tornadoes out around the Dallas-Fort Worth area today. Crazy. Uh, but it is that time of year where we get those major deep low pressure troughs that are coming down with some cold air intermixing there with the uh, warmer moisture uh, moist environment there in texas some activity in southern cal lighten up here within the last hour very small microquakes very small most of the activity here has been combined to a little section of the creeping segment here of the san andreas fault now as we zoom in looking at about eight earthquakes here over the last 24 hours including two um within the past hour 2.5 and a 1.5 here along a segment of the San Andreas Fault. And it is a creeping segment. Um, on occasion, we do get some larger quakes. Might want to watch this uh, for some possible further movement. Definitely showing uh, some heightened activity here along the plate boundary. Throughout the Bay Area, for now, things pretty quiet. Still rocking and rolling around the Clear Lake Volcanic Field today. Northern California, not a whole lot popping off here. Oregon, Pacific Northwest, Washington, some activity earlier, much earlier this afternoon time period there around Mount St. Helens. Some very small microquakes. Around Yellowstone National Park, nothing showing up here on the map. So let's go ahead and check out the Yellowstone overview while we're on topic here. We'll get back to the space weather in a little bit. Nothing really um, showing any type of sufficient movement across the area of Yellowstone. Now, there is a little bit of activity kicking up here on the map over around the northwestern corner uh, of the park, and it's going to be these three earthquakes right here. Kind of distinct. Uh, they look localized to here, to the Yellowstone area, and they're only happened here within the past few hours. So, but nothing's showing up on the, yellow, on the uh, Yellowstone earthquake map. But on the raw data, we're seeing three distinct earthquakes, and... It appears localized to this area. It's also shown up here around uh, Purple Mountain, Madison River, and also around the West Boundary area, but not quite as distinct as around the Maple Creek zone. But they're not big earthquakes. They kind of look like they're either really deep um, because they're not, I mean, looking at these seismograph stations here, they're not showing up across the eastern segment of the park and really not around the northern or western or the southern just specifically within this zone here. Um, so that means these got to be some super deep earthquakes only being shown up here 
around this region of Yellowstone. Not large ones, but there's, like I said, there's three of them there kicking up. So uncertain as to what that is. Again, nothing showing up here across the Yellowstone USGS map. All right, uh, Canada looking clear for now. Not a whole lot going on. Alaska, things kind of tapering off a little bit. Seen some activity earlier this afternoon again uh, in the portions here around the Cook Inlet. The Aleutian Trench, pretty quiet here for now. Western Pacific Ring of Fire. Uh, we've got a little bit of activity here around the Mariana Trench. Um, looks like that was from early this morning and yesterday. Uh, not a whole lot of uptick currently happening there in that area of the world. Let me see what we got for EMSC here. There is um, there is a 3.9 showing up here just off the coast of Japan. And also over around Taiwan, some deeper movement that looks like just offshore. With that, uh, looks like a 3. Uh, 3.5 in that area some other movement there uh, from yesterday as noted 5.7 and a 4.7 all right uh, see what else we got down south indonesia area this movement uh, kind of kicking up here uh, we had a couple after midnight the majority of these uh, and then early this morning but we've only had one 4.7 here this afternoon period um 80 kilometers deep. Now I know we've seen some movement on the earthquake 3D globe here, bouncing back here. Um, in that area, some smaller earthquakes being reported by the EMSC model. And over here around New Zealand and Fiji area, things have been, man, all over the place. Super deep movement and some uh, subsequent shallower earthquake activity there. Quite a, three, quite a few threes and fours. But looking at this map here, you wouldn't think so, right? That's kind of why I keep that uh, other agency listed up here. GeoNet servers do show quite a bit of earthquakes here in the region of New Zealand and North Island, New Zealand, north into the Kermadec Trench. Let's go ahead and check out the latest activity here from the GeoNet servers. We'll get back to Taupo here in a minute. Uh, last earthquake was, uh, looks like 14 hours ago, far as week and above, but we're going to do the all magnitudes here and see what we have. Um, some activity, some twos it looks like around Tapo Volcano. Uh, not seeing anything major. There is a 4.3. That's going to be one of the ones showing up on the uh, Earthquake 3D globe. 238 kilometers deep into the Kermadec Trench there north of North Island. Uh, some 2.7s there. And uh, a few smaller quakes there throughout the uh, afternoon it looks like. Uh, real quick check here around the volcano drums of uh, Taupo. Not showing a whole lot. It still looks about the same as it did uh, this morning. Not a whole lot showing up specifically here within this zone. So uh, some of those smaller earthquakes there just not showing up across the area as far as that seismograph station goes. So it looks like that swarm has pretty much completely died off around that super volcano there in north island new zealand all right let's back out of here see what we have further westward across uh looks like areas of iran seen that earthquake this morning a 5.2 shaking things out there uh, also some activity there in greece in the uh tajikistan tajikistan area 4.1, 153 kilometers deep. Have been seeing a pretty good swarm of activity out here recently in the eastern segment of the Afghanistan area. Let's see what else we have. Uh, looks like Southern Cal kind of lighting up here a little bit as we're doing the update. 1.2 coming in within the last few minutes. Near the uh, Villa Park area. Looks like it's just off of the Elsinore Fault, the northern segment up here near the Santa Ana Mountains. All right, uh, trimmer activity tonight. See what we have for the Cascadia. 34 epicenters of trimmer. Uh, again, right around the Medford, Oregon area. What's going on up there in Medford? Underneath Medford, I should say. This area has been seeing a little bit of trimmer, mostly confined to this area over the past, I'd say, about three days or so. Uh, no major trimmer going on there, but it's been confined to this specific area. All right, uh, what else do we have? Hawaii, 
Let me jump over to Hawaii real quick. I know a lot of stories, a lot of uh, articles being put out now about the um, sudden stoppage there of both the volcanoes, Mauna Loa and Kilauea Volcano. Uh, pretty much stopped at the same time. No longer erupting. Coincidence? Or is this something that we need to watch? Still seeing some earthquake activity up here around the Kilauea Crater area. One earthquake here on the eastern segment, uh, eastern flank here of Mauna Loa, 1.8. What we need to watch out for, I think, is some deeper movement earthquakes uh, in this area that could indicate uh, potentially some blockage below the plumbing system. I'm not talking about toilets, but I'm talking about the uh, magma plumbing system that's down here. Now, there's a, a pretty cool article put out here by the Scientific American. There's a couple different articles. If you want to check it out there, do a quick Google search, and you will find a bunch of different diagrams here on how the Hawaiian hotspot uh, is formed and how the magma comes up from the magma plume and kind of gets spread out in different cracks and different uh, plumbing systems that feel uh, certain volcanoes. Mauna Loa, Kilauea are not the same volcano uh, and they're feel fueled by different um, little magma chambers. So. Uh, it is uh, the magma that comes out of Mauna Loa comes from a series of magma chambers found between about 1 and 25 miles below the surface. Uh, these magma chambers are only temporary storage places with magma and gases and are not where the magma originally uh, came from. The origin is actually much, much deeper. That's why they call it a hot spot. The oceanic crust here is really relatively thin. That's the lithosphere here. And um, of course, this is not to scale according to these guys, but this is a hot spot. And, um, you know, this activity kind of gets shifted up here and spread out into some of these volcanoes. Um, let's see here. I wanted to point out a couple different. Uh, the crust and mantle that compri uh, compri comprise the Pacific Plate cracks at different places as it moves northwestward. Beneath Hawaii, magma can move upward through cracks to feed different uh, volcanoes on the surface. The same thing happens at the uh, Maui's uh, area, which last erupted about 250 years ago. Um, there's there's a pretty cool, there's a lot of cool information in here, and it shows some older um, fissures from past eruptions and their general flow from Mauna Loa, and um, it's definitely worth a read. So I'm going to... Not going to cover that too much, but I will provide this link here in the update video below, folks, that way you guys can read it and check it out. So, but again, I think we need to watch out what goes on here at these deeper levels. I don't know if this is completely over or not. I really don't. Um, it's just kind of odd. Uh, the USGS volcanoes did put out a little statement here um, earlier this morning um, about the lowered alert level. Uh, Mauna Loa and Kilauea have separate magmatic systems and are not connected at a shallow level, but it remains possible that the volcanoes can influence, influence one another through stresses associated with their eruptions. So essentially, when one volcano expands or contra contracts, it can put pressure on or take pressure off of the other volcano. An analogy to describe this is a person standing on a crowded commuter bus. That does not sound fun whatsoever. Uh, during peak hours, even worse, feeling a little squeezed and stressed. Uh, once a bus empties out, the person can relax a little and take up more space. In this case, it is possible that Kilauea, Kilauea has responded to Mauna Loa's eruption despite the lack of a direct connection. Removal of magma from Mauna Loa's reservoir by the recent eruption may have allowed Kilauea to relax because Kilauea's eruption was occurring at such a low rate uh, it could be have been more uh, susceptible to the small changes in stress that were caused by Mauna Loa's eruption. Uh, however it is possible that the change in Kilauea's eruptive behavior is a coincidence. I don't know I don't I don't believe in coincidences there. Um, either way We'll continue to watch it. Uh, there's currently uh, very minimal going on here at either of these volcanoes. They're gonna, they're they're gonna smoke a little bit there and, and uh, you know show some um, heated areas for a little while as things tend to cool down in the coming days. But we'll keep our eyes open here 
for any large scale activity down below that could point to uh, a different story here for the future of these two volcanoes. Um, let's see here, space weather, We've got some activity kicking up here. Um, looks like quite a few sunspots popping up. Uh, we got 3167 there, named. And uh, another new sunspot, but doesn't look like that's going to be named yet. A couple new sunspots around the southeastern limb. Um, and current threat, I think, right now is the main one, possibly from this one, the newly named one, uh, and potentially a region down here to the south. But uh, overall, man, we've just been we've been pretty lucky far as not getting any major solar flares uh, Earth directed here in recent times. Yeah, we did have some. Uh, we had an X flare, so maybe one or two, I think, um, earlier this year. But uh, man, been a little bit on the quiet side far as the excitement goes. No major coronal, coronal holes currently facing us. And really not expecting any major unsettled conditions there for the uh, Aurora forecast for now. 90% chance overall for a C flare threat. M flare stands at 20% and the X flare probability around one or less. Proton event doesn't look likely either. Numerous sunspots out there, folks. But uh, again, none of these really harbor any complex magnetic structure. Current solar wind stream there showing a dying off of activity. Speed dropping down, density, and the BTBZ component is pretty stable there. All right, guys, I am going to pop off here and um, well, let's see what go what's going on up here in Canada real quick. A lot of times I forget about this and need to pay attention on what's going on up here around the Cascadia. Um, a little bit of activity outside of Seattle, it looks like. Um, that was earlier. And some movement up here on the Pacific side of the plate boundary of the Explorer plate. That's going to be this very small microquake. Or the Juan de Fuca, if you want to include this as one entire plate here. Uh, and the Cascadia, of course, sits over here to the east along, along this segment right here. So a little bit of activity up there, but nothing major at all. We'll definitely just keep a... Keep an eye on certain regions here. We've definitely seen that westward pressure movement here recently. Uh, it it did come to a halt, it seems like, right around the Java Trench area. Uh, but over the past couple days, things have progressed and uh, kind of found that uh, westward movement. And that's why we're seeing all those earthquakes here in the area. We should start to see a pretty good uptick across the Atlantic here pretty soon. That area has been awfully quiet with the... Um, lack of activity here recently all right guys have a good night stay safe out there again uh, we've got the drawing coming up here for the members only pretty darn soon and uh, we'll go over some more details in that uh, probably tomorrow have a good night stay safe out there we'll catch you guys tomorrow sometime peace out